Today's Quaticism, it's the Vandermulans. The Battle of the Bros versus Sis Challenge. Who will win the match? Will it be you? Yeah. Oh, welcome back, boys and girls, to Quaticism. Vandermulan family, we're glad to have you. As you can see, the boys do believe they're going to take it today. Quaticism number 40 is our question. And let's see what it says. Oh, again, the idea here, do not quack under the pressure. Well, it says, what should we pray? Question number 40 is, what should we pray? And the answer, well, the whole word of God not only directs us, but inspires us in what we should pray. The whole word of God directs us and inspires us in what we should pray. Here's a verse. Ephesians 3, 14 to 17 says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Now, this is an example of how we should pray. Paul, throughout his letters, gives us great examples of how we should pray. The Lord Jesus Christ gave us an example of how we should pray in the Lord's Prayer. So there are many things and many examples. Let's look in God's Word and see a few ways that God tells us to pray in our first game. Sword Drill Challenge. Vandermulans, are you ready? First verse, Romans 8. So then it does not depend on human will or effect, but on God who shows mercy for the scripture tells the will. I raise you up for this reason so that I may display my power in you and my name may be proclaimed on you. We interrupt this show to give you a late minute bulletin. One, we have two incorrect things. It was the wrong verse that we should have been searching for. And second, unfortunately, Graham, you found the wrong verse. So this round is knocked out. Moving on to round two. Philippians 4.19. Philippians 4.19. Okay, he's got it. And my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and his glory yes, Jesus Christ. Holy cow, this show is getting intense. I don't know if you understood or saw what happened there, but we had a tie as to when the verse was found. And so even though Katya read the verse for us, there was a tie, and so this round is now out as well. Whoever wins this third round wins the whole match at this time. What do you think will happen? All right, here we go. Final verse of the game. James 1-5. James, New Testament, brother of Jesus. Found it. All right, Katya. Now, if any of you lacks wisdom, you can ask God, who gives all, all to all generously and without criticism, criticizing, and it will be, and it will be given to him. Holy moly! There it is, folks. The girls have taken the first round in Sword Drill Challenge. Now, if you are paying attention to the verses, James 1.5 says, If you lack wisdom, you should ask God, which is you can pray out to God and ask him to then give you wisdom to know how you might pray, how you might seek him out and grow to know him as your Lord and Savior. And then here's why we can trust God's wisdom. Philippians 4.19 says that he will provide for our every need, that our God is gracious and he's good to us. So not only will he give us the wisdom to know what to pray, but he says that he will provide those things that we need. This is good, good news. Now, we're going to learn more good news in our next game, Memory Verse Challenge. <laughs> Well done.
on. Both the bros and the sisters completed the verse. And this game, due to cuteness, Legend and Tiernan, the boys are going to be the winners. And so we have gone on. We are now tied one round apiece. Let's look at the verse that we were working on today, Ephesians 3. We went from verses 14 all the way to 21. What do those verses say? It says, for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, which is a great way to start in prayer. To humbly put yourself on your knees before God, asking God to what? To recognize that he is from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So first of all, he says, hey, listen, I am praying that all people would be saved. I am praying that you would be saved, that you would know Jesus Christ, that he would dwell in you, and that he would then continue to strengthen you so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth. That is how amazing, how huge is what? The love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, and that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So now, not only is Paul praying that we are saved, but he's praying that we are filled with the understanding of how great is our God, how great is that love, because this is then what encourages our hearts on to go and do love and good deeds. Now, to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power that has worked within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations, forever and ever. Amen. So Paul then concludes and says, you know, this is my prayer, what I'm asking God for, all people to be saved, that they would know Christ, they would know his fullness, would know the love that is there. It's amazing beyond our comprehension, and that God would do this above and beyond anything I could even ask. And this, that is one of the great ways that we should pray. We're going to continue to learn more ways in the next weeks on how to pray, but that really is one of the best ways that we can pray for people's salvation, that they would know Christ's love, and that God would do abundantly more than all we ask. Well, let's look at some of the ways we could pray about things or ways we shouldn't pray about things in our final round, true and false. Vandermulens, do not quack under the pressure. All right, the game is true and false. Question number one. Father, I know I won't be happy unless I can have an American Girl doll. So please give me one. Is that a true or way, false way to pray? True way or false way to pray? Father, I know I won't be happy unless I can have an American Girl doll. So please give me one. The answer is false. The answer is false. Here we go. Number two. Father, help me to be content with what I have. If it would be good for me, I would like a new bike. Father, help me to be content with what I have. If it would be good for me, I would like a new bike. Is that a good way to pray or a bad way to pray? True or false? The answer is true. Oh, right, here we go. Number three. Father, I know I have the power to heal. Please heal my grandmother's pneumonia. Father, I know, oh, you have the power to heal. Please heal my grandma's pneumonia. True or false way to pray? True is correct. Well done on that one. Going on, question number four. Father, thank you that it is always your will to heal us. Thank you that if we believe you have healed us, we won't ever need medicine. Is that a true or a false way to pray? It's a tough one. This is a tough one. The answer is false. False. All right, moving on. Question number six. Father, I know you are too busy to be bothered, so I won't ask for your help on the test that I'm about to take. Is it true or false? The answer, false. 
Here we go, the one for all the marbles, winner of the day, question number seven. Father, I know that you love me and care about every detail of my life. Would you please send a friend to sit with me at lunch? Is that a true or a false way to pray? The final answer is true. Well done, Vandermulen family on today. You are all winners, but ladies, you are the champions. Well, it was a great game again today. Vandermulen girls, you have won the day. Well done. Vandermulen gentlemen, you looked good. You looked really good throughout the whole process. We will see you next week when we will continue on in prayer. God bless.